So in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, truth assignments. So we saw in the previous uh, video uh, how to define a language for sentential logic, right? So we had a way of writing these things that we call formulas. These formulas that we call well-formed formulas that were built out of variables um, using and, ors, nots, etc. And where the variables were representing sentences, um, prepositions. So the variables could be either true or false, and then out of them would be the larger formula or sentence. Now we're going to see how to assign truth values to, to these formulas. All right? So the first thing we need to do to assign a truth value to a formula is assign truth values to the variables. What I want to do is assign to each formula a truth value, right? So a value that could be either true or false. So these truth values, as I was saying, they could be either T or F. That's what we're going to use for true or false. Okay, so still only two values. Sometimes you could think of them as C or 1, yes or no, um, whatever you want. Essentially, there are two values. One represents truth and one represents false. Okay, so we want to assign these values to each formula. Let's uh, look at an example. Okay, consider the formula P or not Q. Okay, so here P and Q are essentially at variables. Well, they could be other formulas too. But okay, so let's think of them as variables. Consider P or not Q. So is this true or false? What do you guys think? Well, to tell whether it's true or false, um, we need to know whether P and Q are true or false, right? The, well, the answer to this is going to depend on the truth values of P and Q, right? We couldn't know whether P or not Q is true or false without knowing about P and Q before, right? So the truth value of a formula is going to depend on the truth values of its variables. So we're going to define a way such that depending on the truth values of the variables in a well-formed formula, we're going to assign a truth value to the well-formed formula. We're going to see how to do this in detail. Right? Remember that well-formed formula is one of those formulas that are built using the rules we have for formulas uh, in the last video. Uh, but they are the ones that make sense, right? the ones that you can write. Okay, so how are we going to do this? So let S be a set of variable symbols, okay? So for instance, S could be the symbols A1, A2, dot, 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 up to A sub K. So then we define a true assignment for S. It's nothing more than a function that takes assigns to each variable symbol in the set S a truth value, all right? It's a function that goes from S so takes one of those values like, coming from either a1, a2, a k, assigns to each of those a truth value as, as a t or an s, right? Okay, let's see an example. Suppose s is very simple. S just consists of three variable symbols, a1, a2, and a3. That's it. So those only those three variable symbols. Now, for example, we may have v of a1 to be true, v of a2 to be false, and v of a3 to be, let's say, false. All right, so there's a variable assignment. We assign a truth assignment, sorry. We assign a truth value to each variable. All right, so there's not much to this. So now the next step is to assign the truth values to formulas in general, not just the variables. All right, so let's continue with the example. So let's suppose that with uh, this assignment right here, we want to assign a truth value to the following formula. A1 or not A2. What would be the truth value of that formula given our previous uh, truth assignment for the formulas, for the variables A1 and A2? Well, uh, it has to be true. Why is that? Because A1 was assigned truth, right? That's right here. 
and A2 was assigned false, but the negation of A2 is then true. And if you have an OR at this junction of two things that are true, then you're going to get a true answer, right? So that's how you get that. Let's look at another example. Suppose now we want to look at the truth value of A1 or A3 all together and A2. What would be the truth value of this? Well, we had to do a method that's similar to the one we just did. Let's look at the truth value of each particular variable and then deduce the whole truth value. So A2, according to our assumption right here, is false. So we should put an F right there. And then we have that um, A1 right here is true and A3 right here is false. Now these two together form a disjunction. One is true, one is false. So all together is true. One of the two is true. That's what disjunction means. One of those two is true, so we get true. And then we get a true and a false. And that's it. For to have an and, we have to have both to be true. So we get that that sentence is false, given that particular truth assignment of uh, the variable sentence. Okay, so now what we need to do is define this procedure, which I think you mostly understood how to do it intuitively, but define it precisely and in general. So the idea is that whenever we have a truth assignment for all the variables in a certain set, we can extend the truth assignment to all the formulas that use those variables, right? So we have a V that takes uh, each variable in the set S to either a T or an F. We want to extend it to a true assignment that we call V var. And now V var is not defined just in S, but it's defined in all of S bar, where S bar is a set of all the formulas, the well-formed formulas that you can write using only the variables in S. Example, suppose that S is just a set A1, A2, and A3. All right, same as the example before. So what are the formulas we can write using these three variables? Well, there are infinitely many. Let me just list a few so you get the idea. First, remember the variables alone, they are formulas also, right? So you can so those three, A1, A2, A3 by themselves are formulas. But then you also have not A1, not A2, not A3. Those are three more formulas you write with them. And then you, you can combine them, A1 and A2, A1 and A3, A1 and not A2, A2 or not A3, and so on and so forth. And you can start building everything with ands, ors, implies, if and only if and not from those formulas up. All right, so that's S bar. Everything you can build with a 1, a 2, and a 3. Let's go back to our definition. So we want to now define this extension on the set S bar. Now, now we want to extend the truth values to the whole set of bar with all the formulas now that use the ones in S. So how are we going to do it? Well, we're going to do this by recursion. On what? Recursion on the size of the well formed formula, of the formula. So that means we're gonna start defining V bar on the small formulas and then start building up to all the formulas. Let phi be a well formed formula. We want to define the value of V bar on phi, and that's gonna depend on the shape of phi, right? For instance, if phi is a sentential variable, so that's kind of the simplest case we have for phi, then v bar applied to v, sorry, v bar applied to phi is going to be the same as v, right? So if you start with a variable, well, we already know how to assign truth values to the variables, so all we do is just copy, all right? So that's right there, v bar of phi is the same as v of phi. v of phi is the one we started with, and from v, we are building v bar, right? Okay, so now let's suppose um, phi is a bit more interesting. Now let's suppose phi is of the form not psi, 
Okay, so psi is another well formed formula that we built before. It's a smaller formula because it, has, it, doesn't, it doesn't have the symbol not. So it's a smaller formula than phi. So let's assume that we already know how to assign a truth value to psi. Then v bar of phi is going to be the opposite of the value of v bar of psi, right? v bar of psi we calculated before. We know what the truth value is. And now if you look at not psi, the truth value is going to be the opposite. All right, so let's write that in a more formal way. So v bar of not psi is going to be true if v bar of psi is false and it's going to be false if v bar of psi is true, right? The opposite. Okay, and now if I want to define in the same way, we're going to define what happens with the other connective. So if you have a formula that is phi and psi, now phi and psi is bigger than phi by itself and psi by itself, and we already define the truth value of phi and the truth value of psi, then what do we get? That the truth value of phi and psi is true if both v of v bar of phi and v bar of psi are true, right? So with the and, with the and symbol, both need to be true to get a true. Now, let's look at what happens with this junction. So if we consider v bar of phi or psi, what are we going to get? We're going to get true if one of the values of v bar of phi or v bar of psi are true, right? So for the or, which is that little symbol, the v symbol, uh, you need only one of them to be true to get a true. What's up with um, implication? If you have v bar of phi implies psi, it's going to be true if either v bar of phi is false or v bar of psi is true. Oh, okay, that's a typo right there. So, I mean, uh, you get true if v bar of phi is false or v bar of psi is true. So the two, uh, true and f are wrong there. I'll, I'll make a little comment about this in a second. Let's go to if and only if. So v bar of phi if and only if psi is going to be true if and only if the truth values of phi and psi are the same. So if they are both true, you get true. If they are both false, you get true. But if they are different, you get false. Okay? Okay, so let's look at that implication case that was they had a little typo and it was a bit a bit strange. So v bar of phi implies psi is gonna be false. And that's what we have to remember. When is this false? When is the implication false? Well, the implication is gonna be false if the first one, uh, phi, is true, but psi is false, right? So in that case, we know phi does not imply psi, right? So let me repeat that. V, phi implies psi is going to be false when phi is true, but psi is false, right? And in all the other cases, phi implies psi is true. So it's a bit weird because here, in the case when phi is false, the first one is false, like false implies false, we are saying that's true, essentially because there is no contradiction. So an implication means if this is true, then that's true, right? So it's only going to be false if the first one is true, but the latter one is not true. Yeah, pretty good. We can write these definitions in table form, right? So we can remember like all of what's there, but in one table. Okay, so how do we do this? So on one side, we put the truth values, the possible truth values of phi and psi. All right, so here we have phi and psi, and each one can be either true or false. All right, so we have four combinations, true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. Those are the four combinations, All right? And now in each of those combinations, we want to decide what is the truth value of the composed formulas we get from them. So the first one 
the negation. We did that one before. We have to reverse the case for phi, all right? So this column here is reversing the fifth column, all right? So the first column, phi is the first one. So we're just reversing that. When one is true, we get false. Now, when we look at the conjunction, the and, this little symbol is the upside down V, is the and, we get that this one is true if and only if both of them are true. So that's the only the top row. When we look at the or, the V shape, this junction, this junction is true if and only if one of them is true. So the first three rows are true and the last one is the one that is false. In the implies case, let's do it correctly now, phi implies psi is going to be false if and only if the first one is true and the other one is false. And all the other cases are true. All right? So that's what we get up there. And then finally, we have if and only if, phi if and only if psi is going to be true, we say only when both of them are the same value. So if we get both truths, we're going to put a true right there. And if both false, we put a true right there. And the other cases are false. Okay? So that table form, that's the one you need to remember. Um, all right, so that's it about uh, truth values. Now we know how to assign, given the truth values to the variables, we know how to assign truth values to all formulas that use those variables, building from the bottom, starting from the bottom, and up on the formulas. All right, so, okay, that's the end for this video. Next time, we're gonna start looking at how formula or sets of formulas imply other formulas and start playing with this in more interesting ways. See you next time.